Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome to our kitchen today. It's been a long time coming, but we are gonna make our bypass barn doors for our pantry, finally. I did make custom hardware right up there, but that will be a separate video, just in case you guys wanna purchase hardware for your barn doors. I am going to be assembling this barn door out of T111 and solid pine for the edging. The T111 is just under 3 quarters of an inch and here I am laying out to attempt to get an even distribution of grooves on each barn door. I cut the T111 to the proper width on the table saw and then while I was over there I cut the solid pine down to the proper dimensions to wrap that T111. And using the full capacity of my folding wing miter saw station, I cut those boards to the proper length. The frame is joined together with pocket holes and one and a quarter inch pocket screws. Being sure to keep everything square, I used coarse one and a quarter inch pocket screws and wood glue to assemble the frames. The full 8 foot of the T111 is longer than I needed for my particular barn doors, so I used a door board and my rigid cordless circular saw to cut them down to the proper length. And now I am laminating a strip of solid pine on either side of each of the doors and this will frame in the T111 and give me a full 1.5 inches of solid wood to attach and hang the hardware from. The T111 is glued into place with glue on all four sides and then brad nails all along the long ends and then a few in the middle and on the edges of the top shorter ends to prevent any expansion from causing gaps and pulling those nails out of place. To add that cross angle which is so typical on barn doors, I put an angle on my miter saw and cut two sections of pine that would make this cross section. And just like the rest of the assembly, I glued and brad nailed that into place. If I was to do this again, I would definitely hold back on this part until I did the sanding. And like I mentioned before, it totally would have been a smart idea to do all this sanding before even putting the trim on. I should have sanded the T111 and the pine board separately and then assembled. To sand everything down, I used my random orbit, my rigid job back sander with a small end, and a little bit of hand sanding. Since we will be painting these barn doors to match the walls of our kitchen, I caulked and added some spackle to make sure everything was nice and smooth. And then I made the huge mistake of thinking it would be faster for me to roll the primer on. Such a big mistake. To paint, I whipped out my Fuji Q5 Platinum and sprayed everything in about 5 minutes. So I'm going to hire someone, not the wife, to slap me right up the side of the face every time I say it will be faster for me to roll versus spray. It never is. 
A giant chunk was just skipped here where I fabricated this custom metal barn door hardware. I skipped this step because there are so many different options for barn door hardware ready to go right off the shelf that you can find online and even at your local home centers nowadays. I came up with this custom hardware because I wanted these bypass doors to be very, very close together. And that is not something that I was able to find online. There will be a video where I fabricate this custom hardware in the next week or so. There will be a link in the description and in a card when that is available. The hardware for these barn pass doors is hung from the top of the doors themselves. Drill and lag bolt into place. To hang the bypass rail, I first bolted on the bracket assembly so that I could get good alignment. And then held up into place and marked where I needed to drill holes for the lag bolts into the header. The brackets themselves are lag bolted right into the place into the header of the closet using two inch quarter inch lag bolts. And the bypass rail itself is bolted into threaded caps on those brackets using three eighth inch bolts. And after a little bit of off-camera modification to the length of the barn doors, they fit perfectly right into place and worked excellent the first time around. So exciting. And here you can see the bypass action of the barn doors, where I can slide one behind the other and still get our built-in pantry assembly drawers out with no issues. Same thing goes for the other side, hence the reason for the bypass barn doors. Well that is a wrap on the bypass barn doors. There are a couple things that we will probably change someday, depends when we get to it. This gap is a little bit wider than I would have liked, which was pretty much the whole reason for making the custom hardware. My solution for that will be to weld two more brackets for this door with the mounting point on the outside and that will close that gap right up. I also need to add a couple stops on the ends to prevent some over travel. These doors are not going to fall off because it will either hit the fridge or the wall on that side. But I'm going to make some adjustable points that we can put up right there. Hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right over there so you never miss when we upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one.